in 2016, Gay Longworth discovered that her daughter Roxy, aged just 13 at the time, had been coerced into sending explicit images of herself to a boy who was four years older than her. To make matters worse, these photos were now spreading around her school and eventually leading to Roxy dropping out and suffering from mental health problems. Well, now aged 19, Roxy and her mum Gay have written a book about their experience in the hope of helping other families, and I tell you what, it really will help, that book. They join us alongside child psychologist Dr Elizabeth Kilby. Welcome to all of you this morning, especially you, Roxy, for being here, because I know that this is a really tricky subject to talk about, but having teenagers myself, it's a very important subject and one we couldn't shout loud enough about. Um, you were just 13, weren't you? And the boy um, who we're talking about here was 17 at the time, and he was paying you a bit of uh, attention, which was quite nice, and you were messaging each other, and the conversation quite quickly turned sexual, and that's when he asked for one of these images. What were you thinking at that time when that message came through? I mean, I was flattered to start with. It yeah. was exciting. Um, uh, and very quickly, it was just, there was just, he asked for photos, I said no, and it's just immediately there was this pressure. It was like, I'll tell everyone you're frigid and boring and I'll stop talking to you and everyone's doing it, so it's a bit weird that you're not. Mm. And you're thinking, I suppose, then, that this is a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Yeah, I mean, I'd never spoken to him in person. It was all online, but it still felt intimate. Yeah. Mm. And did, did were you brought into this conversation? Um, I, I had no idea. I mean, there were, met, you know, the sort of, there was quite a lot of chat about boys. Yeah. Um, and, of course, as a parent, you're always slightly... You're always warning, but, I mean, I had... No idea had that no this idea. was going on, and how could no. you? There was... Um, it, it got sort of progressively worse because then a message came through from one of his friends, mm. who then was also demanding images as well, like he had some right to receive these images as well. Well, I said no. I, I just ignored the message to start with, didn't know who he was, and then he sent me four photos of myself. So you knew they'd been shared around. And then that, what did, well, you just imagine thinking, oh, my God, these are now being shared. And, and then you're into this terrible loop. And what happens next? You find out that they're essentially playing top trumps, is in, your, in your words, with, with your pictures, who can get the best ones. Yeah, they had played top trumps, and then this new person used the photos he already had of me to threaten me into sending more and more. He had more and more explicit requests saying if I didn't send them, he'd send them around the school. And that didn't seem so silly now, but that didn't feel like an option. Like, I, I couldn't keep going if that happened, so I kept doing it until he asked for a video. Because let's not forget, you're a 13-year-old child. So how, of course, you're not meant to be able to cope or understand with something like that. You're just not meant to. You're a child. Um, Gay, for you, the first time alarm bells started ringing was when uh, you were driving in a car together, weren't you, and you got a phone call mm. and you noticed the tone of this call, her reaction to it, that something wasn't quite right yeah. here. Roxy went sheet white and she told me that the person had asked if it was the number of the local prostitute. And I, 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 I was completely mm. dumbfounded, and, but... And Roxy said, there are some rumours going around school about me. Mm. But that was all she said. When did the school get involved? When did you go oh, to the school? I mean, three weeks later. So she was well into term and she'd been dealing with it all by herself. And that's the thing about the book. You know, you see, if you, when you read it, you know what's happening to her. But what you see of me is saying, pick up your wet towels and, and you know, the sort of classic, yeah. you know, nagging mum. Mm. Um, so you watch me make all those mistakes. Well, when you were writing it, you're saying that, you know, initially you're going to write it together and then, then think, hold on a second, we have two very different views of what went on here. And so very sensibly, you've sort of split that and you can see those two sides uh, uh, from your point of view, from a parent's point of view. Um, when the school got involved, were you made to feel that it could be your fault? I mean, entirely. They gave me a reflective essay to write. Um, where I had to write about why I'd done what I did, why I wouldn't do it again. I'd broken, like, ICT rules. And, yeah, that was actually the first time I self-harmed. And, and, and this is where this story gets difficult, actually, to speak about, because this took you on a real uh, battle with your mental health. You really struggled. You started to self-harm. That moment was quite pivotal, wasn't it? Do you think if it had been dealt with differently or if you'd have felt more supported in that moment? I mean, it's probably hard to say with hindsight, but it's quite key, isn't it, I think, for young women to know that there is support out there because this is what happens when there isn't or when you're made to feel that your behaviour, what you've done, that you were the one who was wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I felt so guilty that I was being punished and that's what, so I started punishing myself. I mean, 
it took years before I even thought that I hadn't, that something had been done to me, like, mm -hmm. years. And so, I mean, you ended up, you know, in, in hospital because of this. As you say, you're self-harming. From a mum's point of view, this is spiralling out of control. This, mm. is, this is horrific. Roxy ran away, and, and when the police turned up, I was still worried that I was wasting their time. And he said to me that the reason why you tell the police and I, is, is not to help Roxy because her life was effectively over. It was to help the next girl that it was going to happen to if it doesn't get stopped. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was such a simple message and I only understood it at that point. Well, thankfully, your life wasn't over. I mean, mm. you, uh, you are at uni now um, and you have looked back at this and you think you know that this is not your fault. You were coerced into this. What was the... What's the, um, the outcome for, for the boys? You know, the, the, you've got all of that happening within a school. You know, top trumps is being played with your personal pictures. Anything for them? Nothing, and the issue, and that was the issue. Like everybody at school knew what was happening because they all had the photos, and so by not punishing the boys, the school sent this message to every single student mm -hmm. that what was happening was okay. Like, nobody, everybody thought it was my fault, including me. But not now. <laughs> not now. <laughs> not now. And that's the key bit. Um, Elizabeth, I wanted to ask you because you know the. The more there's a rise in children having access to phones and messaging and social media, is there a rise in this sort of thing happening? Well, I mean, sadly, Roxy's story is very familiar to me. So uh, recently I was talking to one of my clients who, who mentioned something similar and I made a point of asking every single young person that I asked either had sent or had received uh, an explicit image cannot tell you how normalised this is amongst the group. And what really upset me was the lack of outrage that this is happening as adults you know, and talking to Roxy's mum. Mm. This is appalling and yet young people don't have the skills to know this isn't OK, mm. how to speak up and who to speak to. Mm. And that's the problem. Mm. Mm. Um, well done. Uh, uh, essential. Um, you will, just by sitting here and telling your story, you will help so many people. Maybe it's a very wise thing for any mums or dads watching who've got young children to say, watch this interview and look what can happen, because it's not your fault. Um, and Boys and girls. Yeah, yeah, really absolutely. It's have the conversation with everybody, because this is, affects everyone. In the meantime, um, when you lose it, is Roxy and Gay's uh, book, Two Voices, One True Story, A Mother and a Daughter, On the Edge, and, uh, and that's the book. Um, thank you.